buy something random. Today I've got another bike related video and this happens to be on carbon wheels. From what I can tell, um, I haven't found many good, if any, videos on the care and maintenance of carbon wheels. So the first thing I want to go over is when you get your new carbon wheels out of the box. The first thing you're going to want to look at is just give the whole wheel just a, a thorough inspection. Make sure there's no damage from shipping. Um, just look over everything. So I'll check the spokes. Kind of run my fingers over them. Give them a little pluck, kind of like a you know you would a guitar string. Checking for tone. Differences in tone mean the spokes could be tensioned differently. So if you get a real low tone, spoke could be too loose. You get a really high tone, you could have an over tension. I'm going to go ahead and look at the layup on the outside and make sure there's no cracks or damage. Look at the brake track, make sure it's smooth without any defects. Next thing I'm going to look in is the inside of the wheel. Specifically, right along this bead here, which is where your clincher tire is going to fit. And I'll get a close-up and show you why. Before mounting your tires and tubes, it's important to go along this track here with your finger. This is where the clincher hooks on to the rim of the tire. It grabs under this little recess here. I don't know if you can see it on the video or not. I will run my finger all along this on both sides and what I'm looking for is little sharp areas left over from manufacturing. Sometimes the carbon can be kind of sharp here and what that can do is potentially lead to pinch flats or cuts of your inner tube. So if I run my finger along the inside and I feel a little sharp area, what I will do is grab some 400 grit sandpaper and just rub it over there a couple times, knocking that down. And that will make sure that I don't run the risk of getting a pinch flat up in here on that sharp surface. Carbon wheels that you can get on eBay tend to be a little bit cheaper quality, so they don't go through quite as many quality control inspections as an upper end set of wheels do. So this is very important, just making sure there's not leftover carbon in areas that you don't want it. The next thing I'll do is I'll go over and look at the actual rim tape. Make sure it was put on properly, make sure it's flat, make sure there's no areas that are inconsistent where my tube could possibly get damaged where I put on there. Some companies will actually send the rim tape that you install yourself, which is basically just a giant rubber band. Some is actually adhesive that's put on prior to them sending it out to you. So it's important just to go through and check that. The next thing I recommend is just taking your new wheel that you spent your hard-earned money on to a local bike shop. What they can do for relatively inexpensive, sometimes bike shops won't even charge if you say you buy a ton of inner tubes, is they can just check for true. They'll put it on a little machine or a little mount and run the dial calipers on either side. This will check if there's a wobble side to side. They can also check the dish of the wheel, making sure the spokes were temp tension evenly on one side so your wheel doesn't end up being warped. This will guarantee that when you get on out of your first ride you're not going to have a problem um, and potentially leaving, leaving you with a damaged or broken wheel. So it's very important. My local bike shop when I took a set of wheels in charged me five dollars a wheel and actually when I went in I bought a set of tubes from them they didn't charge me at all. Um, both of the wheels that I took in were actually uh, the spokes needed tensioning a little bit I'm glad I took them in. Now I feel confident that when I get out on those set of wheels, um, they're evenly tensioned and I don't have to worry about putting stress on the carbon in spots where I have a low tension spoke. what to look for when you get a new set of carbon wheels, how do I take care of them? There's not a lot out there right now, I'm sure you can get on the internet, but I tend to like to watch a video and have somebody give me their little tips and tricks for taking care of their new expensive set of wheels. Periodically, it's important to inspect your wheels for damage that can occur over riding. 
Start off with your tire. Look all over for nicks and cuts or places that it's been worn that might need repairing or might indicate that you need a new tire. Next, look at your valve stem. Is there cracks or damage around where the valve stem? This can lead to compromising the integrity of your wheel. If you find that it's rattling, you can put a piece of electrical tape around it. This will secure it. Or when you're inserting the tube, you can wrap a little piece of electrical tape around the stem that sticks through here, and that will keep it snug and keep it from moving around. Once again, like you did when you first got your wheel, is check your spokes. Check for tension by plucking the strings, listening for the tone. Also, periodically take it to your local bike shop and have them put it on their stand just to make sure that your wheel is running true. Look at your cassette. Make sure it spins freely and periodically clean it from all the debris and stuff that gets on it from the road. Degrease it, lubricate it, whatever choose lubricating you use. And this will help your chain last longer and prevent wear of your expensive cassette. One of the most overlooked and critical parts of maintaining your carbon wheels is the brake pads and the brake track on the wheel. The pad on the left, you can see there is a black shiny area on it. And this is a result of overheating the brake pad and also not maintaining the brake track on the wheel. This pad here is a fresh pad that's been cleaned. One of the ways to maintain your brake pads is to regularly check them after every couple rides to make sure that you don't have this going on. This right here will cause poor braking performance and can also cause your wheels to squeal. Look closely at little areas on the brake pad for any bits of embedded rock or metal or anything can get lodged in the brake pad. If you get little bits of rock and metal lodged in the brake pad, this can dig into your carbon wheels and actually can damage the brake track surface of your wheel, wearing your wheels out faster. If you get little areas like this, take a small pin or a safety pin or a tack or something pointy and just dig those little pieces of rock and metal out, making sure that your brake track is clean and free of any debris. If you do get glazing on your brake pads, you can take a piece of, say, 120 grit sandpaper, turning your pad over, and then just going back and forth, remembering not to put too much pressure on one side or the other side so that you don't canter your brakes and it maintains flat. Periodically take your brakes off after every couple rides and do this and this will give you a clean braking surface for every ride guaranteeing that you have the maximum amount of stopping power for any type of condition. Next let's move over to the actual brake track on your wheel and I'll show you how I have maintained my brake tracks. So here's our brake track. If you notice, you've got some buildup of rubber from the brake pad on here, and the track has kind of a shiny surface. Well, what's happened here is our brake pads have started to accumulate on the brake track. And so after every ride, short periods of braking can cause your pads to burn and lose gripping ability. One thing I forgot to mention is always use carbon pads on carbon wheels. Most manufacturers will always send you a pair of carbon brake pads with a new set of wheels. 
Um, most manufacturers also recommend using their pads or to avoid the warranty on your wheels, but check with your wheel manufacturer to make sure it's okay to use different brands of carbon brake pads on your carbon wheels. That being said, if you start to notice that your pads are burning frequently, a number of ways to fix that. First off is to maintain your pads on a regular basis. The other way is to decrease the amount of braking time that you will have means to apply pressure and let it off in kind of a stop and go fashion to prevent overheating of the pad and the rim surface. Overheating of your pad can glaze your pads over and cause burning and also can overheat your carbon rim risking damaging of your carbon wheel. But this wheel needs a little bit of maintenance and I'll show you what a carbon brake pad on a carbon wheel should look like. Here's a look at the rear wheel after I performed maintenance on it. As you can see, it's smooth without any lines or ridges in it, and there's no little spots of brake pad that have been left on the surface. To check and see if your brake track needs maintenance, you can just take your fingernail and run it over here. If you feel little grooves or ridges, it's time to do a little maintenance on your brake track. So one way that I have come up with to maintain my brake track, and some people may yell at me for this, is to use a little sandpaper on it. Now, they don't recommend using harsh chemicals or solvents on here because it can damage the resins in the carbon layup. So I will get a piece of good quality 400 grit sandpaper. If you feel um, like this is too abrasive or rough for you, you can go up to a 600 grit. It's just gonna take you a few more passes um, and it's gonna remove a lot less material. <clears throat> Now, I'm not actually removing the carbon on the wheel. Um, what I'm doing is just going over the surface of the brake track itself, and I am removing any loaded up material from the brake pads. Now, you'll notice when you go over this a couple times that the dust that comes off here will usually be the color of the brake pad. And since in the instance these are blue on mine, I'm gonna have a bit of blue dust coming off. That'll let me know that there is loaded up material on here and then I'm just removing the brake pad that's you know gummed up on here. Now, if you're using Swiss Stop yellows, you're gonna have yellow brake dust or just depending on the type of brake pad, you'll be able to tell by the color of the dust coming off of here. Make sure you get a good, high quality aluminum oxide sandpaper. Don't get a cheap sandpaper because sometimes the grit on here can be an inconsistency and you don't actually want to put gouges in your wheel. Tear off a small strip. Fold the edge over so you have a nice, clean, crisp edge. And then start sanding. Now right away, while as I'm sanding, you can tell these lines here are ridges either left over from road debris, but most likely they're left over from where brake pad material has built up. And so there's high and low spots. So you'll notice after you do this, and you can't really tell that this is blue, but it is actually blue, that when you go over it, your brake track will be smooth again. It'll be free of all the extra gummed up material. And I'm going over this until my track surface is smooth. Now as I go, I'm gonna keep folding over an edge and going all the way around my wheel. 
making sure not to get on the rest of the part of the wheel because you don't want to dull the finish of your wheel. Now with shiny wheels, you're going to have to pay extra careful attention because you don't want to take the gloss finish off of your wheel. But as you can see, all this blue powder is loaded up brake dust that's preventing my wheels from stopping properly. Now I'm just going to take a rag wipe it off and now you can see what my brake track looks like. That's after and that's before. Well guys, I hope that video was helpful. I've got a little work to do on my brake track here, so I'm going to go ahead and get finished with that. I know I may probably didn't cover everything, but um, I hope this video was helpful, and if you have any comments or more suggestions, go ahead and leave them in the comments below.